Hey guys, um, so I haven't actually done a video in ages um, and I recently had the opportunity to build a couple of bits and pieces for um, iBeacons and uh, I basically want to sort of share the knowledge. I really struggled to actually get started with it in terms of navigating the documentation and actually sort of seeing some real life proofs of concepts online. Um, so in this tutorial we're basically going to be building this tiny little app here which does nothing but shows one colour um, or multiple colours uh, depending on how far away you are from the eye beacon. So again, if you're right next to it, then it'll show green. If it's further away, then it'll show near, uh, sorry, it'll show orange uh, because it's nearby, but it's not that far. And then if it was on the other side of the room, which would be classed as far, then it would go red. Um, so that's what we're gonna be building over the next 20, 25 minutes. Um, before you get started, make sure that you have the UUID, the major and the minor values for your beacon. You should have got all of this when you basically bought the beacon or from like an administration panel. So if you're like me, I've got these contact.io and beacons. Um, these are actually all of it. All the details that you need are actually on the administration pa panel and it's the same applies to like the other brands such as like Estimo. They typically come with their own sort of administration panel and you can actually sort of see all those values yourself when you set them up for the first time. For this tutorial I'm literally going to do everything um, straight out of uh, one view controller which is incredibly bad practice and I strongly discourage it moving forward. I would encourage you to find a way of breaking this logic out into different um, uh, into different classes, into like a controller class, potentially a singleton. Um, but if all of that kind of terminology scares you, maybe you don't know that or don't don't know any of that kind of stuff, again, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to field any questions that uh, you, you might want to know. Oh, by the way, we are actually working in Swift free at the moment. Um, I, Swift just goes out of date, like left, right, and center. So apologies if you're reading this, if you're watching this in like a year and it's no longer relevant. Um, but yeah, again, I'm happy to try to uh, field any kind of questions. I typically try to keep on top of the Swift language as best as I can. Um, so maybe I can field some questions there. Anyway, enough of that. Right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and jump in and actually import the core la location framework. But we don't actually have to attach it or anything like that. It's, it should be something which is uh, already there. So if you start typing, typing core, the module should auto complete there, which is lovely. Uh, we're gonna get rid of this because we're not actually going to manage the memory warning behavior. And um, we'll get rid of this comment because we don't need that either. And now we have a nice clean view controller. Okay, cool. So I've basically just written a very, very quick brief, um, which is more for my own age than anything else, um, just to basically sort of uh, help me understand exactly what it is that I'm going to be running through step by step. So typically, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a location manager object. We're going to set a reason as to why we're doing that. I always forget that, so I just needed to write that down because otherwise we'd be here in about half an hour and I would totally have forgotten about that, that step and be wondering why the app doesn't work. Uh, we're going to request the authorization on the device. Um, uh, once we've done that, we're going to be able to initialize a region uh, object, which is going to basically tell the device exactly what the what, what the details of the beacon it's looking for uh, are. Um, if the user is all okay and it's all authorized, which it will be, because I'll be clicking allow, I won't be clicking don't allow, and for the sake of this example. Um, then we're going to go ahead and start ranging for it and once we've got the range we're going to check the proximity for it and we're going to show uh, red, orange or green depending on how close the beacon is. So that's it. Fairly straightforward, I think anyway. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. So um, let's go ahead and create our location manager first. So I'm just going to create a location manager object which is a CL location manager and it is yeah, that's it. So once the uh, once the view's loaded, we basically need to uh, set a, yeah we need to set a reason as to why we're asking for that. I was going to forget that, so I'm glad that I wrote that down. So we're actually going to hop over to the info uh, .plist and we're going to add a new row, and I'm going to scroll down here until I find the uh, the correct one. So it's privacy and it is location always. So the reason is we want well. I want to know if there are beacons around. The reason we're doing this is basically this will actually appear in the box uh, that comes up when the user is prompted as to whether um, they actually do want to give uh, location permissions. Um, we do actually use the location manager object, so we go and we go location manager and we ask for always authorization. 
And because um, I'm, and because we're not going to be breaking it out into different uh, files for this and just trying to keep things as simple as possible, I'm gonna add the protocol to this uh, view controller to actually conform to the CR location manager delegate. And that gives us the ability, if I write it down here, I'm just gonna split it up in a nice clean-ish way, as clean as it can be anyway. A delegate method will get fired, which basically tells the application as to whether the user did or didn't approve it. And that that method is manager it is did change authorization status. Um, as you can, yep, yeah, there we go. That's fine. But I'm just literally going to check the status and make sure that it is authorized always. If it is, um, user has authorized. Application, arrange those beacons, and we're going to break that out into a separate func function. So we're going to go range beacons. Now, the range beacons uh, function is going to do just one thing. Um, all it's going to do is it's going to start looking for those beacons uh, or the beacon that we set up. That's it, it's fairly straightforward. So I'm going to go ahead and call range beacons, even though it doesn't do anything at the moment. Okay. So first and foremost, we basically need to construct a, we actually need to tell the application more about the beacon. So we have to give it a region. Now the, re the region is a, uh, it's actually a subclass of a region that we're going to be using. It's called a CL beacon region. So let's go ahead and create one of those. And that is a CL beacon region. We're going to open up our brackets. Now, you should have the, these details already. Um, UUID, the major and the minor, these are all values that apply to your, um, your beacon specifically. Now that we've actually created the initializer for that, let's actually create these objects uh, separately. So the UUID, the proximity UUID takes a UUID object and to do that we can actually initialize it by specifying our string specifically. So I'm going to go ahead and create a UUID object and it takes a UUID string. I actually know my string um, off the top of my head, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that out. There it is. I also know my major. My major is an integer, and it looks like this. Just cast that to make sure it's all okay. I'm also gonna create my minor as well, and I know what my minor is. So that's, that's all there as well. And now we can feed all of these into, and actually this, just for the sake of keeping things clean, let's actually keep our identifier here as well. And this is my living room beacon. Uh, so again, the identifier can be whatever name you want, and that actually doesn't really matter. And that you you won't get that data from your uh, from whoever you bought the uh, the the uh, beacon from. And now we actually have all the details that we need to start map start looking for it. So let's oh we've got an error. Let's find out what's going on here. So uh, so typically a UID when it constructs it, it will um, it it. Yeah, you basically have to force unwrap it. We can guarantee, I can guarantee that this UID is genuine and it will be able to construct it. If it doesn't conform to this um, pattern, then it will fail. Um, now we've also got another error here. Um, I have made the mistake of casting these as integers when they actually, when it's actually, the CR beacon region actually takes, uh, oh, it's not helping me right now. The CL beacon region actually takes CL beacon major values and CL beacon minor values. And as you can see, these are actually just type of aliases for uint16, which means we can get away with actually just um, casting those. So I'm going to go ahead and dive back into the major and the minor here. I'm going to go CL beacon major value and CL beacon minor value. So I'm just going to tell the compiler what kind of value this should be be seen as um, before we go any further and that should that should all be okay now. Um, cool, right let's actually start looking for these then. So to do that we again pull up that location manager that we created earlier on and we start ranging 
four beacons within a certain beacon region. We've actually already created that object, which is right above, and so that is uh, that's basically everything we need to start looking for it. Now again, very, very similar to uh, how we uh, set everything up earlier on. This will, once it finds the beacon, it will immediately um, begin firing um, a, a delegate method, and we need, basically need to be prepared for that. So let's go ahead and dive back down here and create another function. Um, again, adhering to the location manager, the CL location manager delegate protocol. And so this time it is the location manager, and it is, uh, I always forget the exact name, but it is did range beacons. Um, and it basically pulls up an array of beacons. Um, you can have multiple beacons attached to the same UUID with different major and minor values. I won't go into too much detail about that right now, but for the sake of simplicity, we have one. So this is always only ever going to be one or it's going to be none because it might pick none up for that current region. So we basically need to check to make sure there is a beacon there and we need to make sure that we can check the proximity parameter first. So let's go ahead by actually creating a nice little guard statement. So we'll go guard, that uh, discovered beacon. We'll go beacons dot first, and we'll pick up the proximity. And if that doesn't work, then we'll print something to the console and we'll return. Couldn't find a beacon. Disaster. Um, so that's okay. So actually, let's call that discovered beacon proximity just to make it nice and clear. Um, so now what we can actually do is we can check to see what kind of value the proximity is. Um, so uh, Apple typically, or basically the, uh, this is a CL proximity enum. Um, and the enum values or the cases that you can have are unknown, immediate, near, and far. Immediate is when it is within literally about two to five inches. So literally tapping distance. Near is around sort of three feet and then far is everything beyond there. So we're gonna actually check to see what the value is and we're gonna set the views background color depending on this. So let's get rid of that. And let's do a, let's get the background color and let's file it into a switch to keep things clean. So let's go like background color. It's gonna be a UI color. And we're gonna actually construct it just like this in a nice little closure. And we're gonna switch over the discovered beacons proximity. Now, if it's immediate, we wanna return green because it's right next to it. If it's uh, near, then we're gonna return UI color orange. And if it is far, then we're gonna return UI color red. And the only other value is actually the uh, unknown. So let's actually cover that as well. And if that fails, then we're just gonna come up with black. So now that we actually have the background color, we can just go ahead and set our views background color This delegate um, method will typically get called every second or every like every sort of half a second. So this should update fairly regularly. So I think that's actually everything that we need. Oh, the only other thing that we need and the, uh, obviously I've set everything up here and I've actually set up the delegate. The only thing I haven't done is actually said that this location manager's delegate actually is this class. So let's go ahead and do that before we even request um, always authorization. So we're gonna set the delegate to self. Uh, because we again we conform to the CL location manager delegate so everything should be fine um, and I think that's everything let's give it a try and see what happens um, this is it in near distance this is it right next to it and then if I hold it over here this should actually change it to orange which means it's near but it's not that close um, and then you can go even further like I just did a minute ago um, and that will pick it up so yeah, that's it. That's fairly. That's literally all I was going to do for this um, for this little demonstration. It's nothing too exciting or kind of riveting, but it uh, gives a pretty good idea as to what's kind of possible. Uh, so yeah, so that's everything I think. Um, my, uh, my name's Sam. If uh, you have any more questions, please just give me a message on uh, Twitter. Um, I'm uh, Sam underscore Piggott. I'll write out my handle a little bit below. If you have any particular technologies or anything you're interested in understanding a bit more, maybe I 
kind of went through this a little bit too quick or maybe there's actually a totally different technology that you're interested in on from an iOS front I'd be happy to field it and I'd really really be happy to do like a video on it I'm gonna try and make these a little bit more frequent as I've had like a two-year hiatus and haven't written any haven't you know sort of done anything in a little while so I'm gonna try and make these a little bit more frequent um, so yeah please give me a shout get in touch um, and yeah be really really cool to hear your thoughts